Hey guys, welcome to another episode. I am Brian and this is my investment channel. If you're a first time viewer, I want to welcome you to the channel. If you're a current subscriber, thanks for joining us again. We're going to talk about forming an LLC on this episode, why it's needed, what it does to protect you, and how to fill out the forms. Let's get started. Where is because it's a well structured law state that really helps LLC users. A lot of big LLC corporations will actually use Delaware just because of their structured laws. I'm going to be talking about Virginia because that's what applies to me and also I've uh, filed many LLCs in this state before. So first of all, in Virginia it's $100 to file an LLC. And it's a one-time fee and then it's $50 every year after that to stay incorporated. Each state is a little bit differently. It could be anywhere from $100 to $800 if you're in California, but uh, you'll have to look into your own you know, state to see what the requirements are there. But for now, I'll use Virginia as the reference. The second thing you need to do is name your LLC. If you're into real estate, you could do like South Lake Ventures LLC if you want to include you know, all your properties under one name. If you want to change it to a certain, uh, for every property to have its own LLC, it may be like, um, you know, Apple Mall Shopping Center LLC or something like that, so that uh, only that LLC applies to that property. So if anything happens to that property, it's only to that property, not the rest of your properties. If you're going to file something else in your name, uh, so if you're a single member, sole proprietor, LLC like I am, instead of naming it as your own name, if you're going to change your name and if I was going to do something like uh, you know, Brian's YouTube LLC, I would have to file a fictitious name or doing business as, as a, a fictitious name is basically another name that you're using um, in place of your own name or if you have say a video editing company and you're like and you own three different video editing companies and you want them all under the same roof you would have one name for your LLC that incorporates everything but that name doesn't have to apply to any of the companies that you are actually that you actually own or operate under so you know a fictitious name is just whatever name you want the LLC to be and that's what you would use on your legal documents so the third thing that you need to do is file the articles of organization. It's going to differ between the different states. This is part of the structure of your LLC. It sounds a little hard to do, but really it's not. Let me show you. This single page document right here is for Virginia. This is all that's required to file for your articles of organization. And what it says is limited liability company name. You just put it whatever your fictitious name is or whatever LLC name that you chose. The name of the uh, initial registered agent. What that is is that would be your name or my name, whoever is the agent in charge of that LLC. You would choose a box, you know, a member or manager of the LLC, uh, blah blah blah. If you had a, if you had multiple mem registered members, if you said, hey, three buddies of mine and I are going to start, you know, we have four people. You know, you would choose whatever box is according to, you know, however member, the amount of members that you have or, you know, just for yourself. Um, so you just check whichever box applies to you. The, you know, the, uh, the street address, city, zip code and all um, of where your business is located, if it's in a county or city. Um, the principal address, if it's different. And then all you do is sign, print, date, and then it's optional. You can put a telephone number, email address in there. Um, but that's it. That's your entitled, ent entire articles of organization. One single page and it's done. That should take you no more than five minutes to complete. Now your state could have you know, a three page document. I don't know. If you want to incorporate in Virginia, this is all it is and it costs $100. Alright, so the fourth thing that you need to do is create an operating agreement. This is another structure to your LLC if you are uh, so that you know the government or whoever it is or if you go get a loan uh, they know who's in charge of your LLC they know how you're operating what kind of business you're operating 
things like that. It's super simple. So basically in Virginia, it's a six page document, but only two pages apply, these two, uh, that you would actually write in. And it's really simple. Uh, you can take a look right here. And so it says, this is a sole member operating agreement, which means, you know, if it's only me, then this would apply to me. You put your name of uh, whatever your LLC is on top. This operating agreement is made and entered into. So you put the date here um, and the company name, and you basically just do that a few times, um, the name, the date. And then you come down here, it says the purposes of the company shall be so, you know, if you're an ATM company, you would put, you know, that your company, the purpose is, is, you know, an ATM business where you can get a little creative there about what you're doing. Um, and then down here at the bottom is a witness. Um, you know, you're probably going to have to get it notarized, but you'd sign and print um, down at the bottom. And that's pretty much, it just has a bunch of laws in here. So basically you're agreeing to, uh, to everything in here. So it's basically just a simple contract saying everything I state in here is true and accurate. And some of these, I mean, you could have a 20 page one if you have a multiple member uh, LLC. So it just kind of depends on the state. Like I said, Virginia, two pages, you're done. All right, number five, you need to obtain an EIN. This is the employer identification number. It is highly needed on any kind of business whether it be an LLC, an S Corp, a C Corp, any of the, you know, partnership, anything like that, any kind of business that you, that you do needs an EIN. Um, you need it when you create a bank account, when you pay taxes, anything like that. I highly recommend you do it on the IRS website. It's a lot easier to walk through. I printed out um, a page that uh, to show you, um, which is here. It's a one page document. And so it says, you know, the legal name um, of the EIN, you would put, uh, you, you know, your fictitious name into here, mailing address, city, state, zip, county, uh, name of the responsible party, which would be you or whoever's in charge of your uh, LLC. Uh, is this application for an LLC? Yes. Um, you can put uh, your social security number in here if it applies. You know, is the LLC in the United States? Yes. Um, you just file the box for an LLC is your type of entity uh, and if a corporation name or state um, where incorporated so it's not in a foreign country that doesn't apply reason for applying you could put you know I started a new business I hired employees which if you're gonna hire employees um, you know you have to put that box you have to have an EIN uh, to have employees banking purposes if you want it just so that you can create a bank account you can put that down so just check the box the date that the business started um, which it you know could be this day because I'm assuming when you start your business you're gonna do all this on the first day anyways uh, so you just go down check the boxes super simple um, and that's that's pretty much it like I said online a lot of this is not gonna apply uh, I'd say half of this doesn't even apply to get an EIN, um, but it'll walk you through it on the website. Just check the box and fill in the information and you're done. It's super simple and easy to walk through. All right, number six is obtain the necessary business licenses. So I'm a licensed contractor and with my sign company, I lease a commercial building and I do contractor type work and I have to have a city business uh, license because I lease a building in the city and if I was in the county I'd have to get a county business license so with a contractor if I do over twenty five thousand dollars of work in a certain city like say Richmond Virginia I would have to actually file for a business license in that city because that's the requirements a uh, contractor requirements so depending on what your business is going to be you may have to have certain licenses for things like if you're a real estate agent you would have to have a real estate broker's license or a um, salesperson license so it just kind of depends i mean most of you watching this you're probably looking for a passive income and you're looking for you know playing in the stock market and things like that so you wouldn't actually have to have any licenses unless that you were you know a financial advisor or something like that 
Uh, but just be careful because you know if you're doing passive income and then you also are starting your own business, just know about what kind of licenses are required in your state. And uh, of course, a quick internet search will tell you that. Number seven, we're almost there. Set up your bank account. So to set up an LLC bank account, just take all your, your EIN, your articles of organization, your operating agreement, and everything with you. Um, not all banks are gonna require the same stuff, but just take everything that you have in there and tell them you wanna open up an LLC. If there's a multiple member LLC, you're probably gonna want each member there. And knowing that if you have like two, you know, two registered members, if there's a big you know, five, $10,000 check you wanna deposit, you're going to have to have a signature of each of the members you know, on that check to deposit it. That's why it's nice to just be the sole owner of the LLC and you don't have to have anybody there to do anything. You, know, you can control 100% of it. So you just basically walk in the bank and tell them you want to open up an LLC business bank account, give them all your documentation, fill out a couple papers, and you're done. And most of the time you have to have a minimum deposit of you know, 50 or $100 to open the account. Um, but it's, you, know, you have to do all this other stuff ahead of time before you get the bank account. The bank account's gonna be one of the last things that you do. Number eight, keep current with your required filings. So once a year, you're required to refile your LLC. In Virginia, you know, it was $100 to initially start it, then it's $50 every year after. If I don't pay that $50, I could get penalties, late fees, they could shut down my LLC, or they can just deactivate it and cause all kinds of headaches and issues, and you really don't want that. You know, each state has a different requirement, but in Virginia, as long as you're paying that fee, and you know, once in a while they may ask you to validate your information. Um, just stay current with all that. It's usually about 30 to 60 days before your LLC expires. They'll contact you, usually a letter in the mail, and you know, they'll say, hey, you, know, you need to file for next year's LLC. Um, and it's incredibly easy to do. You basically just go online and, and pay the fee. All right, so you gotta ask the question, why do I need an LLC? What's the purpose of it other than just the government knows who you are and you pay money? Well, it fully protects you. One, if you're a multiple member, it protects you from the other members who are trying to destroy your business and bring you down. But also as a sole proprietor, like with my sign business, you know, I deal with electrical signs. If I go out there and put up an electrical sign or service someone's sign and it burns their building down, they would come after my LLC and you know, if the lawsuit was a million dollars, I couldn't pay it. Let's just say I didn't have insurance. They, you know, I would lose everything, all my property, all my products, you know, all my equipment. I would lose everything. But as an LLC, they can only come after your company. So if, you know, if I have an employee out there and uh, let's, let's, let's say I'm operating as a sole proprietor and you know, I have my buddy driving a bucket truck and all of a sudden you know, he, uh, he destroys somebody's property or, you know, or, or kills somebody and then uh, they can actually target me and they could come after my home, they could come after my car, everything that I own, um, you know, I would, could go to prison, um, especially if I couldn't pay what was owed. Uh, so they would actually come after everything that you own and destroy your entire life. So if you owned a house, you know, they can actually take your house as collateral to pay for it. So the LLC keeps everything to the business and the worst thing could happen, you go bankrupt, you know, but that's what insurance is for. You know, your insurance will pay for most damages as long as it's not criminal, but it's really good to protect yourself. And when you get into S corps and C corps and things like that, those get really complicated, really expensive. And most, you know, small businesses, they don't need that. You know, the LLC is super basic and simple and that's all you need. So thanks again for joining me again on uh, my investment channel and I hope that you subscribe and like this and drop some comments below. I will try to comment or you know reply to everyone's comments on my channel and uh, I look forward to seeing you in other videos.